Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel where today I will talk a little bit about typewriters again. Uh, you may have noticed if you like typewriters that I have made a few typewriter videos before and I have noticed, I have noticed that uh, people like watching them, uh, which I can only presume means that the YouTube community of viewers are interested in typewriters and would like to see more typewriter content. And uh, uh, since I love typewriters, I think it's time to make a few more videos about them because I do have a nice little collection of 26 machines and uh, I'm going to show off all of them at some point in my videos and talk a little bit about them. I'm no expert. Um, all I know about typewriters I learned because I sort of had to in a way when I was buying typewriters. I didn't just want to buy typewriters willy-nilly and, uh, and so you have to do a little bit of research to find out what you're looking for what you should buy and what you shouldn't buy, what's worth the price and what isn't. Because if you go to any auction site and you look for typewriters, it's going to be the prices and the qualities of uh, machines on offer is going to be completely random. Uh, lots of people think that because a typewriter is old, it's worth at least a hundred pounds regardless of condition. Others will think that because a typewriter is a popular one, it's worth £500, which usually isn't the price that you would pay for any typewriter. Uh, you certainly shouldn't. And um, then there are some that have no idea. And, and most of them uh, it has one thing in common, which is that people selling them don't know whether they work or not. So you're taking quite a bit of a gamble if you don't know what you're looking for. So in any case, um, I've bought 26 typewriters and um, with different keyboards, different models, different styles. Most of them tend to be Olympias, actually, for some reason. I do like Olympias. Um, but there are some other brands, too, that I quite like. So today I'm going to talk about one that is very popular uh, still and was very popular during, uh, has been popular during wars, for instance. And I'll get back to that and I'll have a little look at what I've got on my desk here, which is a very small typewriter indeed. Um, now, there are different categories of typewriters. You can sort of roughly categorize them by size. You are talking about office machines, which are not intended to be moved around. They're ten intended to stay in one place. They are really big and heavy and solid and durable and easy to service, etc., etc. So they are made for office use, for heavy use every, every single day, all day. Then you have your bigger portables. Uh, like your Olympus, or not Olympus, Olympia SM8 and 9, for instance, your sort of mid-sized portables. And then you have the smaller portables. And then you have another category, which I like to distinguish from smaller portables, which is ultra portables. This is an ultra portable. It is very compact, very light for a typewriter that is made out of metal, that is, and very... Well, quite hard wearing, durable as well, easy to just lug around. This one has seen better days, of course. It's got quite a few marks of wear and tear on this case. The original handle is missing and it has been replaced with a uh, plastic strap, which works. Um, let's have a little look inside. So, what we have here is a Hermes Baby. This is a hugely popular range of typewriters that started i'm not sure if they even started in the 30s or if it was the 40s but it also they were made right until definitely into the 80s as well um although they did change a little bit along the way this is from the 50s um and the 50s ones they tend to have what is known as the gull wing design which is that the uh, ribbon covers they pop up like so and they open like like gull wings uh, and then you have the ribbons underneath. Uh, later models I think starting in the 70s or certainly in the 80s they have a single piece top I think they were also made out of plastic actually at that point and it has a similar shape but it is a one piece and I presume the whole thing opens up from the front here. I actually haven't seen one in person but you do get lots of them on um, auction sites and they are usually hugely overpriced. 
Anyway, now this one is quite rough uh, in at the edges. It's got a, a crushed knob here, which is quite a common problem with these. Uh, the plastic used in these knobs wasn't the greatest. They should have made them out of metal, just like most other things on it, and it would have been fine. Um, it's a very compact design because you got your return lever, your carriage return lever over here, and it just it's a very small one. It folds out like this, and your line distancing control actually holds it in place, and that also locks the carriage. So it actually this little thing there is doing a lot of things all at once, which is very clever and very Swiss. This was, of course, made in Switzerland. Hermes is a Swiss company. Hermes, I suppose they would have been called. Uh, although they did remove the accent from their name at some point because they marketed themselves internationally. Um, this one has a paper guide that flips up like this. This one's a little bit loose i think the spring is probably broken or nearly broken down there um and this one is not quite perfect it's got some issues with it i bought this really cheaply because when i was buying it it wasn't even working at all all the keys were stuck the carriage was stuck and um I've just done enough work on it to make it possible to type on. Uh, another interesting thing about this particular one is the keyboard layout. Now this is uh, quite interesting, I think, because it has all the accent diacritics that you need uh, for most languages. It's got the diaresis, the umlaut dots, it's got the circumflex, it's got the accent markers, the grub and the acute and it's got the tilde, and that is on its own key, which means you get both the lowercase and uppercase elevation of the diacritic, so you can use it over a capital N as well as a lowercase n. Very convenient. This is, in fact, a Portuguese uh, keyboard layout. Uh, now, there are two different layouts that were used in Portugal. This is the QWERTY layout um, that was used in Portugal with all these accent marks here and they also had a one that was specifically made for Portuguese and I think it is called uh, H-C-E-S-A-R I'm not sure how you would pronounce that Cesar or something um, let's call it the Caesar layout um, and it's one of the few countries in the world uh, in fact or, or Latin um, Latin alphabet countries to actually create their own keyboard layout that was used frequently um, the other country, famously, of course, is Turkey, um, that in the 50s, I believe, they did a lot of research and found the keyboard layout that was the fastest to use for the Turkish language, rather than adopting the QWERTY layout, which isn't fast in any language. And so they created one that is two to three times faster, actually, to type on, with all the most common letters in the language on the middle row under your fingers and then as you get further away from your where you have your fingers the less frequently used letters are and the ones that actually don't exist in Turkish but are in the Latin alphabet they're used for foreign words they are right away on the far corners very clever design I must say now so one of the things about Hermes babies is that they were very popular with reporters and that is because they are light you can drag them around and of course especially people uh, reporters who needed to go out in the field and we're talking war reporters for instance this was a favorite with war reporters nice compact small and uh, well camouflage colored in, the, in fact this one i'm not sure if that's a um just a random quirk or if they actually did start making them with these kinds of colors specifically because there was such a big market for them in the militaries and for journalists working in the field in war zones. Whatever the case is, it's not a bad choice for someone who wants to be out and about in the field um, because it is small, light and durable, well, with some caveats, of course, like the knobs. Um, 
I'm sure you could improvise something quite easily in the field as well if you needed to. I mean, there's a, a few screws there. You can just add something there with a piece of piece of wood or metal or something. Um, and you could sit with it on your lap and type quite comfortably in the field. So quite an interesting little typewriter. Another thing that I like about it, I'll just show that now. I'll just put a piece of paper in. Nope, can't use that note, so I have to use this one, which is a little bit weird because I'm always used to using the right knob for, there we are. So, um, got a nice sound to it, nice action. It's quite light actually, but the thing is, one thing I like about this, um, many, many typewriters, the lever action on them that controls the, um, the type bars is in such a way that you need a certain minimum force before it makes an imprint. And of course, the same is true of this, but the minimum force on this is lower than on many others. So you can actually make a weak imprint. And it's... so you can make a wider range of shades of gray actually with it, depending on how hard you strike the keys. And that adds a lot more life, I think, to the typed text. And of course, these days when typewriters are obsolete, um, one of the things that appeals um, to us about typewriters is the aesthetic of the typed text. And one of the things that makes that fascinating is, of course, misalignments between letters and also that variation where no two letters, even of the same letter, looks the same. So it is brilliant for that. And that is uh, characteristics of the whole range, I believe, or certainly of the ones that I've tried. So this is very, very nice typewriter. And I'll, let's see, do we have a ding sound on this one? Yes, we do, we do have a ding at the end there. Okay. So here we go, nice and easy to use and quite solid. And even this one, which is really beaten up, still works, even though I did have to unstick some of the keys. Uh, I think probably somebody had been using WD-40 on the segment here, and which that is the worst thing you can do because it gums up quite quickly and then everything starts sticking. So nice little typewriter. So. Right, but that's not the whole story because um, there is another typewriter, I'll just move this aside now, that is identical. And that is this one. This is how the case is supposed to look when it's nice and shiny and new, I suppose. It's got the handle and otherwise it's exactly the same. This is the Empire Aristocrat. Um, and if you look at them side by side, I'll just move this over here. You can see they are pretty much identical and that is because they are the same typewriter. This is the British made version of the Hermes Baby. Uh, this was not unusual. I mean, some brands of typewriters were made in different countries and usually they would be branded the same, but sometimes a particular brand would have a different branding for a domestic market. And the Empire Aristocrat was the British made Hermes Babies made for the British market. So I'll just have a little look at that too here now. I'll just put that over in the middle. Um, nice and shiny this one. This has been cleaned up a little bit. This was a bit more expensive than the other one. The other one I got for 10 pounds or something, I think. This one cost me almost 50, but they still tend to be a lot cheaper than a Hermes baby these days. Uh, it still has the gull wings. This one also has original metal spools, which is brilliant. Um, and the same mechanism, although this one is a little bit working a little bit better the way it's supposed to. Um, and also the spring works here for the paper guide back there, or the paper rest. Um, so everything about this is better than the other one, but I do like the keyboard layout better because I am not a big fan of a UK keyboard. 
which has all these fractions which nobody ever uses on a typewriter instead of accents which are useful for typing real <laughs> language. So I'll just have a little try here. The one, another interesting thing about this particular one here, this, and of course typewriters of particular models, they came in different flavors when it comes to what kind of type they use. Now this one's a little bit sort of tinier. It's a different sound actually to the other one. I don't know why that is, but it's quite interesting. Now, and also the, uh, there is supposed to be some dampening material, some rubber things on the space bar. They are not here. Um, so there's still room for improvement on this one as well, but generally it works really well. Now, an interesting thing here is that, the text, you can see it's a little bit weaker, but it's also quite a bit smaller. Um, and this is one of, actually it's actually the only typewriter I've got that is 13 characters per inch. And this is the usual uh, 10 characters per inch. So that is quite an interesting difference. Um, and for some reason, this one needs quite a bit more typing force than the other one. Um, which means we can also even better actually do the shades of gray. So now uh, these are all pretty much different shades of gray now, depending on how hard I've uh, punched the keys. And which makes it really great for typewriter art, actually, if you want to create pictures with typed text it's nice to have the option of doing the different shades of gray. Um, but this is an absolutely amazing typewriter to type on. The other one is actually more comfortable to type on, but uh, this one, it's, yeah, I really like the 13 character per inch text. I think, I think that's uh, one of the things that's, uh, this is the only one I've got uh, with 13. Uh, most typewriters have what is known as Pika or Elite, and uh, I'll keep forgetting which is which now, but I think Elite is 12 or 11 characters per inch, and Pika is 10 characters per inch, um, if I remember correctly. And uh, some of the Olympia ones, they are 11 characters per inch, which is still considered Elite. So 13, I suppose that is still a kind of Elite kind of text, Elite 13 characters per inch. Um, one nice thing about the, when it gets, you get more characters per inch, the height of the character doesn't change as much as the width, which means you get a narrower letter, which sometimes can look quite nice, but you see the letters are also more squashed up against each other, which is a different look. Um, so quite an interesting typewriter, I think, and so if you are in looking for a Hermes baby and you don't mind the UK keyboard, it is a lot cheaper to look for an Empire Aristocrat, actually, because Hermes babies, they tend to be hugely overpriced. I was having a quick look on uh, on a famous auction site yesterday and I hardly saw any costing less than 200 pounds. I don't know what people are thinking. And those were often the uh, later 80s models uh, made in Italy or Brazil, which actually aren't supposed to be that good either quality wise. So that is that. Uh, this one has quite nice red keys for your shift, carriage, lock and backspace, shift keys. And this is for unjigging your how's this for unjigging your your locked up keys like so so there we have it nice typewriter so that is the Hermes baby and Empire Aristocrat both 50s models it's got a nice ding as well um, Need to fold it up like so. And let me get my Hermes baby. So two very nice ultra portable 
typewriters, but of course very hard to get a Hermes baby for anything less than the cost of a kidney these days. Uh, and I presume it's partly because the Hermes brand has been talked up so much by, by celebrity typewriter collector Tom Hanks. Um, so I am, although he usually talks about the Hermes 3000 and 2000, he doesn't talk so much about the baby, I don't think. But yeah, well, by association, all Hermes typewriters have inflated quite a bit in price. So there we have it, two almost identical typewriters um, in very different conditions, but both very interesting, I think. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you again in my next video where I'll do typewriters or something else entirely. So if you enjoyed this, please like, share, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon and I will see you again later. Bye for now. Bye-bye.